We are live. Welcome to this episode of Blue Line Icing presented by Thunderblogsports.com. I, of course, am the G-Man with me, as always, aka for the second time of two shows, is my man, the prophet, Greg Piatelli. How are you, my friend? Missing you, Jordy. I uh, haven't seen you since the fall, so in my opinion, that's way too long of a time. Uh, I know. It's been almost a quarter of a year. Quarter of a trip around the sun, as they say. Do they say that? Are there many who say that, such things? I don't know. I feel like I heard that as some <laughs> dad joke. I don't know. <laughs> I live my life a quarter lap around the sun at a time. There it is. See, you yeah. just got to turn into it. If you're going to make those statements, just turn into it and go full. Could you imagine just the fast and the dads and it's Vin Diesel as Dom Toretto? Cause he's a dad now, but it's all dad jokes instead of just like him being tough. Um, I stopped watching probably after, um, if it's pre fast five, you need to start over and watch fast five. Cause oh, yeah, fast five is when it gets good. Way when the, rock joins. Five. the first one was good. The second one was Tokyo drift. Oh, Tokyo Drift is three. Two is with Ludacris when they're in Miami. So I watched the first one, and I watched the Luda one. And then Tokyo Drift, Drift I dumped and changed and never watched another one since. Oh, really? Oh, you got to watch Fast. Fast 4 is okay. Fast 5 is great. Yeah, like I said, I dumped and changed after Tokyo Drift. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, it's uh, – oh, man. They drag a, a safe around fucking Brazil. It's incredible. Uh, but anyway, we're not here to talk about the Fast and the Furious franchise. We're here to talk some hockey. We did a little bit the last time you were on the show in December. The Really, the last time we did this, I think, was in November for the first Blue Line Icing episode. Uh, somebody can feel free to correct us if we were wrong. But a lot has happened. The Flyers have continued to stink. They did not use the firing of Ron Hextall. Whenever that happened, that's when we did the first episode. They fired their coach since then. They brought up Carter Hart. I think you and I talked about that a little bit. The Three Bruins. Game win streak. What was that? Three game win streak heading into the break. Yeah, after an eight game losing streak. So Three game we win can talk streak. about that. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> hey, they've scored four less goals than your Bruins, Greg. So, you know, What's are the Bruins having a goal scoring problem? It's my real question. All these questions and more will be answered on the pod. Yes, this is true. I won't <laughs> get into the amount of goals both teams have let up because that's where my argument really loses its leg. But Greg, how's it been? How have you thought the first more than half because every team's played about 50 games. How have you thought the you know this pre-All-Star break has gone for both your Bruins and in general? Um, You know, Jordy, I think... As we talked about before, the league is never more exciting with all the young talent, um, and that was put on display with the All-Star game, and um, even the, you know, people say the best player in the league is Connor McDavid, and he's 22, 23, so 21. Yeah, um, yeah if that, right? So, you know, it's... it's uh, it's a good time to be a hockey fan, the right time to jump on board if you're not, um, especially because those majority of our listeners live in Philadelphia. Sidney Crosby, while still is one of the best, um, one could argue he's on the back end of his career despite being so young. But he'll probably play till he's 100 because he's a workout freak, like my boy Tom Brady, who was in the Super Bowl on Super Bowl Sunday. I don't know if you've heard of that, Jordy, but the Patriots are back in the Super Bowl for a third straight year. Um, but no, hockey honestly is, is is it's exciting because you know with this young talent comes parity, and with parity comes you know fan bases thinking that they're in it longer, which means ratings are higher, people are going to games later in the year, and the conversation really has you know teams have really been in it up until this last you know even even a team like the Chicago Blackhawks who have forty five points, but you know, they're still, you know, 10 points out of being in the playoffs, if not less. So um, no one, I would say, has played themselves out with the exception of probably the Ottawa Senators. But 
Ottawa Senators and New Jersey Devils and the Philadelphia Flyers are still within that 15 points, which is a lot, but 15 points out of the playoffs. So close, but not too far. Um, Jordy, let me ask you a question. Fire away. So I'm not sure if I – no, I definitely said this, but remember when I said the LA Kings uh, in our preview pod, they reminded me of the San Francisco Giants? Yes, I do remember when you said that, and you have been spot on on that. I mean, there's a reason why they call me what they call me, but that, sure. that is, is there a bigger surprise in terms of the bottom end of the league? Is there a bigger surprise um, than the Los Angeles Kings right now? I don't know what's a bigger surprise that they are it, by far the lowest scoring team in the NHL. The next closest to them is Dallas. They've scored, the Kings have scored 114 goals. Dallas is at 126. Uh, actually, Anaheim's at 120. But what surprises me more is that the Kings, with Jonathan Quick still, you know, kicking it pretty well, are at 150 goals against. I know he doesn't really have a lot behind him in terms of defense, but that's still, I mean, that seems exorbitantly high for a team that's prided themselves on this grinder, great goalie, grinder style team that really keeps you low scoring, and they don't need a ton of goals to beat you, but they still can put them up if they can't, if they, you know, feel like it basically, or at least in their heyday, that was what they had been. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Did they fire their coaches? They did. They did fire their coach pretty early on in the season. I think he might've been the first head coach out of the, out the door. Right. So clearly that didn't work. And, you know, I think it's less of a regime change in terms of coaching staff and more of their core, their nucleus has reached, the end, if you will, right? And and they reloaded with older players thinking it would help, but with the league being so young and fast, you know, the guys who, you know, the it's not really a grinded out league anymore. And, and, you know, Brown, their captain, was great back in the day because he could throw his weight around and, and back in the day, five years ago, throw his weight around and, and didn't need to dangle everyone to get by them. And nowadays... Defenses, defense aren't really stepping up to hit too much. They're more poke checking and riding guys out into the wall as opposed to trying to lay a big hit. And yep. in order to be a defenseman, you either have to have unbelievable hands or you need to be able to beat them with speed wide on the outside and to be able to cut back in the middle all before from blue line to the top of circle so you can get a decent shot. And the Kings don't have that. You know, they, they their guys, uh, may have good shots, they may have hard work and F and all that, but the reason why they're not scoring goals is because they don't have the speed, they don't have the hands, they don't have the youth as we talked about. Um, think about this, to emphasize that point, their top five point getters right now, Anze Kopitar, Dustin Brown, Drew Doughty, Jeff Carter, and Ilya Kovalchuk, fresh out of the KHL. All great players and have had great careers, but as you pointed out, not the youngest guys in the league by any stretch of the imagination. Right. I mean, maybe a young, talented player on their team. Uh, I'm trying to look through their list to find the best example, and I'm struggling to do so. Well, isn't that the point? You know, shouldn't you, every team, you could you go up and down in the NHL, and without even looking at it, you and I could probably pick out one or two guys that are young, from each team that are going to be good or are now good and, and still young. Yeah. The Kings. Oh, yeah. What? No, no, no I'm, so I'm agreeing with you there. Yeah. Yeah. The Kings have Dowdy who is an 89. Um, but you know, they got Jeff Carter who was good when the Flyers went to the playoffs that one time X amount of years ago. Um, yeah, know, he was like, good on both of their cup teams. You don't, don't uh, on the Kings cup team. So don't, don't sell him short, but you know, to that point, he only has 10 goals this year. Kovalchuk is 9. Dustin Brown is 12. Kopitar is 14. I mean, Dowdy might be the best, you know, just in terms of the value you're getting out of him as a you know a good offensive and, and good two-way defenseman. But you're really not. But again, it's all old guys. So really, it's a, a very precarious spot they find themselves in. Yeah. And you, yeah. Have, to, you have to think, are, you know, I don't know what their contract situations are like. I don't have those numbers in front of me, but 
does one of them get dumped to try to get a couple prospects back you know, in the next month before the trade deadline? Yeah, so I was thinking about this. Um, not that the Kings would ever do this, but a smart move because clearly they're not drafting well. You know, they, they – Oh, yeah. Without knowing – their farm system, but they, they clearly they don't have enough young talent, or, or they're just refusing to bring it up. Um, the Toronto Maple Leafs are looking for a defenseman. Yep. If not a number one, a number two, because you know you could argue that they have a number one now. But is Dowdy for a bunch of picks the right move to start the rebuild? It could be. That could be the right play. Yeah, but would you want to part with someone who's I mean, he's an 89. He's, he's he's young, but he's not too young, right? Yeah, I mean, the Leafs just did that on the opposite end of the ice, right? With a forward, they let JVR walk, who I think he's an 88. And so, I mean, I guess they probably might be a little more frugal. So they might there that might be where talks fall of how many picks do they let up, what how high of a you know what how high do they go up in terms of rounds? Um, do they probably, do they throw probably, a bunch of back end picks? Do probably, they try to get it? With so many of their young guys, not to cut you off, so many of their young guys being in contract year in the next couple of years, rent Ooh, a player for, for a year, right? Yeah, for Toronto, I'm saying. Yeah. Rent, they, they, they rent a player in terms of Dowdy for the year so they can – or maybe, I don't know, maybe they do it ne- way until next year when Tampa is no longer as big of a wagon as they are now. But Yeah. What is it, four-year entry-level deal? So this is three of four for Matthews? Matthews, Marner – and then they just had a holdout this year, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. With what's his face, Nylander, who's like, sh- who looks like I know he went over to Europe, but it looks like he just fucking sat on his couch drinking beers with you and me watching the NHL. It looks like <laughs> he has not Kessel. done very well. Yeah, Phil Kessel for sure. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's what I'm saying is, is yeah. you know, it's in terms of bottom in the league. You know, Ottawa, we expected they're in a rebuild. New Jersey, you could argue uh, a team that made the playoffs last year, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, they, they were the the final, really the flyer for the New Jersey, New Jersey, uh, Columbus, okay, so the Penguin. Uh, so the Flyers are getting ahead, but yeah, New Jersey more surprised. Said Myers, Devils. One of them is coming to the playoffs. New Jersey was building up that way because. And you've said players of guys letting him be. New Jersey did that. And they, and then, granted, they've had, but really spot similar to the fly on the road. Uh, but they're they're oh, alone. They're really is falling up. Uh, some of the deal here where they got. And, the duck. It is interesting to me to see them in the bottom of the Metropolitan trading with the fly. Who three games? Both teams uh, more. In. Right, and my big thing. I mean. It's a good point, Jordy. And and with New Jersey and Philly, you could throw Detroit in there. But, you know, I've been saying it since the jump that Philly's been caught in that limbo, and I'm glad that they're selling off their parts, and we'll get into the Flyers later. But, um, you know, you look at the West, and a team like Chicago at 45 points, uh, you know, that's probably probably out of it at this point. Um, they – but they just mix things up and got rid of their gene or got rid of their coach and and whatever. So, I mean, Edmonton at 49 points is still like, you know, the wild card lowest point is 52. So they're still in it. You know, St. Louis still in it. Arizona is still in it. Surprisingly, Anaheim 51 points, Vancouver 50 points, 52 points. So there's about six teams that are in the wild card punt right now for uh, the West with the top teams being significantly ahead of them. Um, and then you flow over to the East and similar story. I mean, half these teams in the East, if they're in the West, they'd be in the playoffs, but Carolina, Buffalo, you know, four points out of the playoffs The Rangers, I guess we'll call it eight to nine points out of the playoffs. Um, and then goes down from there. So there is, 
in the West, it's mu much closer, uh, probably because they beat up on each other, but much closer uh, in terms of, a, a, of a, you know, how many teams can actually still legitimately make the playoffs in the East. The East, it looks almost all but set. Um, you know, you could – there probably will be some flip-flopping, and we'll get into it later, but there will be some flip-flopping among teams here moving forward. But, you know, it really – it really is, uh, you could argue, there's um, 10, to t 10 to 11 teams in a hunt for the East with uh, 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, 12 teams. Like I said, 9 to 10 with 12 teams in the West in it, 8, eight 9, 8. Sorry, nine to ten teams in the East versus twelve teams in the West that are legitimately in it still at this point. So, um, you know, it's exciting. It's going to be an exciting end of the year, and and uh, you know, we'll see what's next, Jordy. What do you think? So I'm onto the call. Oh, what the fuck? What happened? Oh, it just it sent me to a a. Troll room. I just got back on. Um, I heard, oh. and I heard that it's going to be an exciting end of the year. I've been talking. I've been talking this whole time. Was it recording? You what? I said I've been talking this whole time. Was it recording? I think so. Yeah, and I just got kicked in and out. What were your What were the uh, the cliff notes of your points so I can uh, <sighs> respond and not and not sound sound uh, what's it called uh, like I'm jumping over it. Sweet. So uh, basically, it's a good point about Philly and New Jersey. I had no idea what you said because you cut in and out. So you might have to cut your whole part. Um, I basically said that transitioning from the bottom of the league to the top of the league, I said that there's 12 teams in the West that could still make the playoffs. And the only teams that are out are really probably Chicago, Edmonton, and Los Angeles. And I said in the East, there's much more, it's less teams that are still in it. I said there's re probably realistically 10 teams that are fighting for playoff spot. Um, with the Rangers being the cutoff, and, and a lot of teams are out at this point. Okay, cool. All right, so I'll jump in and, and uh, give you the, the props on that. Hold on, let me try to burp. There we go. All right, three, two, one. That's a really good point, Greg. And, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I think the East, you're right, is definitely a little more not decided because there's certainly teams floating around the wild card that could be – you could continue. They could try to be buyers and really go for it. Uh, there's a few that I that I have in mind that that could be in that position. Uh, yeah, the Rangers. I agree. Probably a good good spot on the cutoff. Um, I'd argue maybe they're off of it. I know they they rode a three game winning streak in, and Lundqvist is looking better than ever. And we're going to talk about his All Star game performance or really the weekend performance from him in a bit. But yeah, I you know. I think the West is is definitely an exciting race, and I think, yeah, I mean it's it's exciting to see some of the teams that are hanging out there. Teams that, you know, if just a year ago were super young, and we thought were their rebuilds ever going to end? Vancouver being one, Arizona being another. I know there, you know, there's a lot of teams jumbled between that 52 and 50 point range, um, and really Edmonton, St. Louis are right on the bottom or right below that at 49 points. Uh, I probably do agree, though. At Edmonton's, you know, they, they'd really have to to really get it going, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what can what Calgary can do because I know you, know, you expect Winnipeg and Nashville to be up there. You really expected San Jose to be, you know, far and away the cream of the crop of the Pacific, and Vegas is, is still continuing their their tremendous success that they've had from their first year. But what the Flames if they can continue this and get that one seed for the Pacific division, I think that's going to be really exciting. Yeah. So Calgary has a feel to me, um, has that feel of a team that, uh, you know, we'll call it like the Indianapolis Colts for all those years where they were unbelievable regular seasons. And when it kind of came down to the playoffs, they just got stomped on because everyone else was playing that much harder. And I feel like Calgary is one of those teams where they played fast and loose they, you know, they go hard every night. They have a bunch of, like I said, young, fast guys that just fly around the ice. And for them, you know, they're one of those teams that throughout the regular season, they're going to win a ton of games. But when it comes to the playoffs and every other team kicks it up to that next level and physicality is added to that, you know, 
a little bit as well as, like I said, everyone else kicks it up a gear for speed. Everyone else kicks it up a gear for, for intensity and all that. Those teams that play hard throughout the regular season, you know, you could look at Tampa last year and they just beat up on teams and they got to the playoffs and they couldn't match the intensity and they really got, you know, taken to the edge by every series that they were in. Um, you know, with the exception of Vegas, I guess, but really – the Calgary to me has the feel of one of those teams that, that is just going to not fall off. Cause I do think they're a fun, exciting team, but I, you know, may not succeed uh, or may not make it as deep as, as everyone will predict. Yeah. It's tough. Cause they would have to, in theory, they're either the one, they either win the division or they're the two, three seed. God forbid they, they flame out. Oh, <laughs> And end wow. up at a four seed and have to play the Sharks in the first round because that would be, in theory, that's your second round matchup. And it's this team that you know everybody picked to be in the Western Conference Finals, if not the West's representative in the in the Stanley Cup Finals. So you have that problem of the divisional format, but they're also super young, like you mentioned. You don't know how to weigh that factor in, especially right now where they have so many games left. They've scored so many goals. Is it going to be something where they either have some type of correction a little bit and have a little bit of growing pains they have to work themselves out of? Um, or is it something where they get into the first round, they play a, another young team right now it would be Vancouver um, or possibly Dallas, I think, uh, because they, they would be the one seat. No, it would be Vancouver. Uh, another young team, though, Dallas would be an interesting one for them as well because Dallas stinks on the road. But yeah, maybe they get through there, but then they have to face San Jose, and that's when they get completely stop. You know, completely the buck stops here. Um, that's a really good point, though, because the youth is is definitely something that's tough to quantify. You could even argue that's what happened to Winnipeg last year. I mean, they got to. I mean, granted, they they got to the Western Conference Finals and faced Vegas, but you know, they they seemed to the power started to seem to come out on them a little bit. You know, a little bit uh, too late. I agree. I agree. Um, and Winnipeg, another one of those teams that just finds a whole other gear in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you could argue Pittsburgh does it every year. Um, Washington obviously did it last year. Um, Jordy, you know, got into my head. It's I don't see a clear-cut favorite. Um, you know, everyone could argue the Tampa Bay Lightning – um, and many will argue the Tampa Bay Lightning with 76 points, and the next the next closest team has 63 points. Yes, 76, and then the next closest has 63 in the whole NHL. Um, so you could argue that Tampa Bay um, and and is a clear cup favorite, and they probably are a clear cup favorite. But based on their track record and based <coughs> on what they did in the past couple of years in the playoffs, granted all those guys who are first time playoff players last year aren't this year but or are you know have the experience this year but um you know in NHL playoffs it's so it's really is anyone game anyone's game so before before we get the Tampa Bay and the Atlantic let's give me your thoughts on the New York Islanders currently leading the Metropolitan Division 63 points uh plus 25 goal differential Jordy yeah. The, last, the last 10 games, they're 7-2-1, and one, uh, the one being an overtime loss. And they start off, ironically enough, their first game back from break, I think, versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, so the Islanders have been outstanding. For those that don't remember, they lost their captain, John Tavares, to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Matt Barzal looks fantastic for their team. They got Barry Trotz as their new coach from the Washington Capitals from what fresh off a cup run. But yeah, these guys, Greg, they have looked fantastic over the last 20 so games. Their only losses have been in Chicago to the Blackhawks in a close game at home against their rivals, the Rangers on the heels of a back-to-back -back where they took them out four, three, at the Garden, they lost at home, in whatever home they're playing at, 2-1, which is another testament to how well that they've been doing. They've been they've been sharing two arenas as their home stadium. 
They also lost to the Hurricanes, another good team, a team currently in the playoffs. Their other loss was in Las Vegas, but on that road trip, they also won in Colorado 4-1 in Arizona. I almost said Phoenix 3-1 in Dallas 3-1 in Toronto 4 nothing in Buffalo 3-1. And then St. Louis is who, you know, they're kind of on the cusp of, of falling on their way out, but they won at, they won on the road there. I mean, these guys, they've put together a hell of a season, and it's something that really just shows what a good coach does and what guys that want to prove, hey, we weren't just a superstar in the league. You know, we weren't just we weren't just Tavares. You know, they picked up Phil Pula, who left the Flyers, and he's already at 11 goals this year. Brock Nelson's still having a solid year. He's at 16 goals. Anders Lee at 18, leading the team. Matt Barzell leading the team in points with 45, and he's even a dash four, not his plus minus, uh, with 26 pims. You got to love that, Greg. But, I mean, what this team has been able to do, I think, has been absolutely outstanding, and they had some pretty solid goaltending as well. Uh, from Laner and Thomas Grease, you know, both guys have put up some pretty nice numbers for him. Well, that was gonna be my point is that they don't they don't have a number one goalie. Both. Yeah, it's not not a clear cut, but it's a good fucking tandem. I mean, we mentioned it, or we mentioned that off off air about the Flyers' 2010 run. But if you're running running well with a platoon, run well with the platoon. Well, that's yeah, that's what I'm trying to say is that they play both goalies the same amount of games and. They just rotate them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, it's resulted in this, you know, neither one gets tired. They don't have an off night. You know, they, the goalies are able to stay fresh, stay focused, stay on it. Um, the problem is the number one goaltender in the playoffs, you don't rotate goalies every other night. So you well, would the argument with Tampa, right? Is that they don't have Ben Bishop anymore. So Vasilevsky last year kind of lost all of his steam being the only guy. Yeah, exactly. And you need you need a backup to play some games, but you also need a number one to turn around. Like that's what happened with the Rangers every single year. Henrik Henrik Lundqvist, who we're going to talk about in the All Star game, gets tired every single year, and the Rangers aren't able to make a deep run because the guy is gassed, and he's he's the reason why they make the playoffs in the first place. Now. Is it Laner? Is it Grace for for the playoffs in terms of this Islanders team? You know, I guess that's only for the coach and the team to know. Um, but reality is, they have the same amount of wins. Just you know, or you know, one game different for wins, one game different for losses. Um, similar goals against, similar saves, similar save percentage. Two shutouts versus three shutouts. So it. As crazy as this to say, you know, I guess Laners are number one. Liners are number one, but is he good enough to win them a cup? Probably not. So, do you go? Is this a team that goes out and makes a move and gets a goalie at the at the deadline, or do they keep things status quo and hope for the best in the playoffs, like the Devils did last year? Yeah, that's a very fair point. Um, the Devils, though, I mean, they had they had a uh, Corey Schneider who just been banged up all year, but. To do, but that's a good point of that. If the Devils or the Islanders, excuse me, decide to you know go out and make a move and decide, hey, you know what, we're going to show Tavares what he's missing, and you know really go after it. I don't know what their farm situation looks like or their draft pick situation, so I don't know what assets they do have to go after. Say Sergey Bobrovsky with Columbus. I know they're sitting only four points back, but there's been talks if that doesn't go well and. You know, who knows how the month of February is going to go for this entire division because Pittsburgh's sitting in fourth. Carolina's look great at times, and they've also looked piss poor at times, but they're sitting in fifth. Um, you know, who knows who's going to be at the top of that and and in the, the three locked in spots by the end of this month. And who knows if the Atlantic tunes it up and takes away the two wild cards. So if that happens. Columbus starts to sh- starts to uh, falter. Maybe maybe they ship off Bob over to uh, Strong Island. I mean, I, I'm not sure I see them. Well, they're building the stadium for them, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're building one in Belmont Park. Right. So not the, not the where they were used to be. But, um, but they've been playing at the Coliseum this year, some of their games. Right. So Along with Barclays with the Mercedes in the corner. Staying in the, staying in the Metropolitan, the Pittsburgh Penguins, Jordy, one game out from that top three spots, <clears throat> one game out of, or one point out of, 
Columbus and two points out of Washington. Um, I personally have been saying that they're going to make a run here. I personally have been saying forever that they're going to they're going to flip flop and jump over some teams. Uh, I personally am still waiting for that ha- to happen, but again, another I statement five in a row now. I think. All right, the, LeBron. Yeah, I think nice. I think the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to uh, do it. I think they're going to finally make that run that I've been promising to the listeners, make that run that we've been talking about and jump their way up into the top three, get a, get a first round matchup with either Washington or even Columbus who they own, uh, even the Islanders, whoever it may be. And uh, yeah, I think, I think they have another huge deep run and, problem with the with the penguins is is what are you gonna get from matt murray yeah i mean he's been banged up a little bit this year and i agree with you with the penguins i think it was a, i think it was like january 10th last year they were playing the flyers it was their first game of the, the first game in the pennsylvania rivalry of the of the season the penguins were sitting in seventh place the flyers were sitting in eighth in that game the penguins ended up as the two seed the flyers did as the three but again just off of two teams tanking, but the Penguins were far and away, like right, right around there with the Capitals for the top two seeds in that division. And it's exactly what you were saying. They know when to turn it on. They've done it in two years that they've won the Stanley Cup. They've fired their head coach and been out of the playoffs and looked left for dead in December and then turn around and win the fucking Stanley Cup. This team knows how to play well post All-Star break. Sidney Crosby over the weekend looked like he has not rusted a day since his rookie year. And Malkin is probably going to be pretty fresh. Phil Kessel probably ate a lot of hot dogs wherever the hell he was. I don't know if he just made Coney Island open for him over the weekend or what he was doing. Um, But, you know, I think, yeah, I I agree with you. Matt Murray's probably got to play a little more consistent. But, you know, uh, as Jared had pointed out on, on the, 10 topics, five minutes pod that we had him on for about a week ago, a little over a week ago, the day your, your new England Patriots prove they really are still here, Greg. Uh, you know, they need a little more consistency on, on both ends. Cause de- definitely they've had some good offensive showings, but some pretty terrible defensive showings on other nights. Yeah. Another team that's probably in the market for, uh, for a defenseman. Um, yeah. I guess you're right. It, it, it for them, it's it's not having Murray and, and defense all year. Um, yeah. you figure That's exactly Sid, what it is. Yeah, yeah. You figure Sid the kid is is a guy that you know has this defensive prowess or whatever. But um, yeah, no, and that's a good point. And, and great point, Jordy. Great point. Um, I love that you played a forty goals. Holy shit! Who? Both Sid and Phil. I guess Phil technically would be less than that because it's nearly fifty games. But yeah, Sid on his way. I don't know when he's last scored 100 points, but he's probably going to get there. He's at 57 right now. Uh, yeah. he, I know he didn't last year because only Giroux and McDavid hit 100. Um, no, but Sidney, I mean, Crosby, he's one of the players that makes everyone around him better, and, and that's oh, yeah. with every one of their forwards. The problem is, you know, they don't have the Brooks Orpic. They don't have the, that defenseman who's going to match up on the top line. The Tang is good. But you need him. You want him against the second line where he could dominate, uh, oh, yeah. and not having to shut down uh, Connor McDavid or someone like Did that. You imagine so, if they got Dowdy, the pits, the Penguins did. I mean, talk about talk about <laughs> star-studded wagon team there. Jesus Christ, that'd be insane. I mean, what's what more, what that that power play, that power play would be absolutely absurd. And it begs the question, Jordy, if they, what if they protected? Uh, Flurry instead of Murray. You know, I, I know they they're all in on Murray, so not they're not going to go out and get a goalie. But I mean, yeah, he made some good cup runs, but he's yeah, been hurt. I, I think he's been hurt of, every year. He's been hurt every year since Flurry's been gone. Yeah, it's one of those things where where I guess you have to just you made your bed, you slept in it, you were hoping that he that he'd heal up. Fun fact, though, Greg, do you know when the do you know how long it's been since Crosby's hit a hundred points? I do not been since the 2013-14 season. He had 104 points that year. He has not broken 90 points since. Wow. Yeah, he went he got 89 points the last 2 years. Uh 
two years ago, 44 goals, man, just did not dish the puck around enough to get to hit 90 or even hit a hundred. But yeah, I mean, he's hit it five times in his career and it looks like he's well on his way to a sixth. Then those middle years in between his last hundred point year and the, uh, the fourth one, four out of his first five years at a hundred points. Those were the years that everybody thought though, in 2010, 11 and 11, 12, that Sidney Crosby was going to be done. Remember that when he kept getting concussions, like, oh man, yeah. he could be the best that never was. And then, right. yeah. And then the next year was the lockout year. And then the first full year and he scored and he scored 56 points in 36 games. Then the next year in 13, 14 is hundred points. So I think he proved those haters wrong. Hey, flexing on his exes, right? Yeah. I guess no, he doesn't really that, have any that, for being. That didn't, that didn't make sense. Don't, don't do yeah, that. Lifelong sure. penguin. Don't do that. That didn't make sense. No, uh, are we his exes? He's just flexing on us. He's always done that. It's one of those Flyers, players. I mean, that, Flyers fans. It's one of he's one of those players that he's the best for a reason, and everyone knows he's the best. Kind of like Tom Brady. He's the best for a reason. Everyone knows he's the best, and and he may not have the highest statistics every year, but he. He's a gamer, he's a winner, and he's always the top of the league. And when when you when Crosby had legit guys in his lines and not rookies and not third and fourth year guys who really should be on the third line, when he had legit number one wingers on his line, he put up a hundred points. Yeah, I mean he's right there's, now, nothing wrong. there's nothing wrong with him. Right now, right now Kessel plays with, with Malkin and, and Crosby plays with Gunsel. I mean, you can play with anyone and make them look good. But, um, Jordy, let's get into Flyer Talk because I know you got to go. Give us a little a brief Flyer Talk outside of, um, you know, why they, like I've been saying, why they should blow up the team and trade everyone now uh, and load up on young guys. But give me give, give me some Flyer Talk as out, and don't just talk about Carter Hart because you did that last time. One give last us- point just on the, just to wrap up how exciting the first half of the year has been. And I couldn't, I could not find the actual, all the different points. I do know that this is the most amount of goals scored per game. And I think total since the first year after the lockout. So the NHL, despite, you know, everybody saying the goalies are getting too big, they're getting too specialized. Uh, the skill guys have really figured it out. You have three guys, you have, you have or not three, you have how one, two have six guys already eclipsing 70 points looking like you're going to have way more than just two guys hit a hundred this year. Uh, and you know, I think it's, it's tough to not think that the, the league is in very healthy shape, despite, you know, some faux pas guys like Connor McDavid being on teams that, you know, we didn't really touch on them. We can talk about them next time. Cause I'm sure they'll be in, in just as a precarious spot, even though they just fired their GM. So who knows where they'll go from there. Um, can I, can I put you on pause for a second? Yeah, sure. Hang on. Hang on. You're good. Okay, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Uh, I can't see her. Happy birthday, Kelly! Four cupcakes? What's Laurel cooking, or you had four cupcakes? No, she had four cupcakes. <laughs> you had four cupcakes? What kind of what? cupcakes were they? Were they big cupcakes or the mini ones? The baby. The oh, baby ones, good. Right? Good. They're big bundle in Boston. No. No, Laurel or- not? No, Laurel orders them. No, I don't order them. Your brother sent me them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well my, my coworker used to potential, so I, she, she picked them up for me this morning. Oh, that was so nice. That's really nice. What kind of cupcakes were they? Callie, how old are you? She's like, you're four. So you. He muted himself. Uh, uh, or I would have. Hello. <laughs> I wouldn't have put 
All right, sorry about that. Laurel's niece. It's Laurel's niece's birthday. Nice. Not really, Jordy. I oh, know it is nice. She's she's four years old. She's not gonna remember. Not gonna remember what her birthday? That we talked on Skype at four years old. <laughs> All right. She'll, she'll know. She'll know the connection. All right. Um, yeah, but I'll Please. jump in. I'll jump into the flyers. Um, hold on. I'm sending a text to Matt. To Matt. Um, yeah, well, he said the Flyers. I was. He sent me a, a uh, Snapchat from the Flyers. Did I, really quick, did I ever complain to you about how Matt goes to fucking things and I got annoyed that he wouldn't like post things on the Thunderbug Instagram? Yeah. Well, it turned out he got a new iPhone for Christmas and he just didn't have the credentials. <laughs> and that's why in, two, in the last month he hasn't. But he well, doesn't. It's funny have, because I went to the World Series. Sure, he I hasn't for the. I, I want to like. He, I want to, uh, we're go so we're, he's going, he's going to Phoenix this weekend as well for our buddy's bachelor party. And I want to like be like, we should do an impromptu or impromptu business meeting. Ooh, an impromptu thunder blog meeting. Yeah. I want to get him to start writing again. He's so fucking lazy. It annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> well, he says like, Oh, I don't have the time to write. The, the cold hard locks. I thought the pot like he keeps backtracking, but he has time to write fucking fantasy football recaps for our league when our commissioner goes on fucking honeymoons. Ah, god damn it! What a liar. I, I know it's a lie, and I, I know you're just fucking around with me. But it, 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 you know, I wanted to be good. Whoa. I wanted to be good. Oh, I'm not fucking around with you. I'm being serious. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I don't. I don't. There's a reason why I'm on. Uh... I'm not on Team DeStefano for the Thunder Blog. Thunder Cup. That's true. That's true. Well, he doesn't even pick his team. He's too lazy to pick his team. You could argue I was the MVP of year one, and you could argue the reason why you smoked him in year two was. Yeah, because you were there. You had the. You, mean, you, had, you, wanna, had the you, you, you put him in a mental pretzel. I don't want to give myself full credit, but. You put him in a mental pretzel. True that. Um, He's the fake Matty D. Um, but yeah, I'll jump in as the Flyers. We can still, I, I probably have about 15 minutes until I absolutely have to go. My game's at 745 and it's going to start late. All right. Well, let's finish the Flyers and then we'll touch on the Bruins and then we, or we'll touch on the All-Star game. We'll do Bruins then All-Star game. Then we'll wrap up. Go. All right. All right. Three, two, one. But yes, on to the Flyers. As you mentioned, you've mentioned it a lot and and I've tried to defend the the previous regime wanting to go for you know you go go within the window um well really it's the ownership and and then being on a different page with ron hextall as we mentioned the first time of how he was way too overly cautious about bringing up young guys then he gets fired they bring in clark Fletch fletcher um who brought up carter hart he's brought up a lot of young guys and he started to started to deal some guys away and you know, he's gotten a little bit back, and and I think that's just the beginning. The Flyers are, are pretty pretty soundly out of a playoff spot right now. You mentioned at the top of the show, uh, three-game winning streak. They won four of their last five before the break after losing eight straight. So, you know, there's some positivity there. But, you know, with a guy like Wayne Simmons in a contract here, it's almost a foregone conclusion that he's going to get dished. At some point in the next month, I'm sure they're going to be able to get some some nice assets, at the very least draft picks, probably a couple of good prospects, I'd hope, uh, for him, like they did when they acquired him, when they traded away Mike Richards to the Kings. Um, and then Jeff Carter, by two different <laughs> trades, ended up at the Kings that next year for a cup win. But, you know, um, it'll be interesting to see who else gets dealt because Giroux has become – really almost like a folk hero in this era of Flyers hockey over the last 10 years since he got called up. Um, so do they want to cut that short and give him a chance to be on a cup contending team that's you know really just helped to load out there? What could the Flyers get or would they ask for too much? Um, I'd be interested in seeing what they do with Voracek. I wouldn't want to personally see him go because he's one of my favorites. But um, you know, ever since he, he did so well, I forget how many years ago that was. I think it was like four or five years ago where he was second in the league in points. He's re really struggled to recapture that. You know, Couturier scored 30 goals last year, and he's done okay at the start of this year. I mean, 
the nice thing about the four out of five wins is that a lot of those big names really were the the forefront of it and really showing the young guys that started getting called up some of the you know some of the ropes in terms of how to score and and what you would have thought they'd have going into the season uh jvr despite having missed about 10 games he's at 12 goals travis connectney who will not get dealt i'm sure because he's so young and a good building block to to you know build around they can certainly use him probably couturier who's almost at 20 goals now i'm glad um, i'm glad you brought up uh carter hart well yeah i brought i bring him up all the time but my you know, they still got Provorov. they still got gossip bear my, my question is with carter hart why they sent him down oh they sent him down during the all-star break he's already back on the team Oh really? Yeah, he got recalled yesterday. He was he got sent down to the Phantom so he could keep playing during the All Star break. That's absurd. What you don't, you'd rather him sit around for five days, sitting around drinking beers with you and me, watching the All Star break? Yeah, let the kid breathe for a second. He he let him come up from air from all, from his time in the Flyers. I think he wants to play. That kid's a gamer. That kid's a gamer, huh? It's a gamer baby. Didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't he and Team Canada lose the uh, gold medal match? Yeah, that's because nothing beats pure hard American grit. I mean, Jordy, we talked about this on repeat. Yes, they have some good young talent, but the problem is all their guys who are who are older taking up spots. Uh, no, yeah, and that's and that's what they've started to do is they sent they've sent away guys. They traded away Jordan Wheel. They got a draft pick for him. They, I mean, I keep mentioning it. Gudis is just fucking taking up space and he, I, how he's still on the team after his performance in last year's playoffs is beyond me. What about, uh, what about, but, what about Latera? I, well, Latera is going to get arrested soon. That guy, as you well know from that fucking, his, he nearly tried to murder one of the Bruins. I mean, that guy's a scumbag and he's yeah, going to so get, why, why is he still on the team? I don't know how they, I don't know why they didn't just buy him out. You know, you, you know, this whole story about him in Finland, right? Let's hear it. You don't know this story. So he he's like getting he's like apparently linked to like a cocaine ring in Finland. So I've heard the story of Jordy, but not everyone who listens to the pod may have heard the story. So let's yeah. hear it. He's linked to a cocaine. That's basically it. He's linked to a cocaine ring. And I don't know if he's been subpoenaed by Finland yet, but it's like so it's the real. Story, it's, the story was that they're using his house. Is that what it was? Finland. His story is they're using his house in Finland while he's in America. And they've set up shop as like, like whoever it is, his buddies or whoever, whoever he gave access to have set up shop in his house to run this cocaine dealership or, or ring as you called it. And so, and he's claiming, Oh no, I knew nothing about it. The, like I just lent my friends the house or like he said, he, he, he loaned out his house while he was in NHL while he's in America rather. And he knows nothing about it. So I mean, you're not wrong, but he's also taking up spots, and so is. Oh no, I totally agree. He's so going to be gone right. soon enough. Dale Weiss is going to be gone soon enough. I think he just got loaned down to uh, to the Phantoms. But yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. Andy McDonald's still fucking taking up space. There's a lot of guys that they need to start get shipping out of there, and I think they're just were caught in weird contract scenarios. A lot of it was was Hextall that he just was afraid to bring up the guys that have been. In the Phantoms organization, Scott Gordon, their AHL or their current NHL coach, was a part of that AHL team that was one of the best AHL teams last year. And they had the AHL MVP. They had a lot of different guys. They had, they didn't have Car Carter Hart yet because he was still down up in the WHL. But you know, I think that's. I mean, we're in a we're in an interesting spot of the Flyers, and I think you know, whenever this this rebuild you know really finishes up, it's going to complete. Probably from let's say 2012, their last series win until now, until when the you know the win when that you know long purgatory period, as you put it, ends, where they don't win a series, they go back, they go in and out of making the playoffs. Um, you know, it's going to be probably one of the the darker periods of Flyers hockey, considering how many times they've made the playoffs throughout the franchise's history. Uh, but you know, maybe we'll all be better for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I I can't say anything that I haven't said before that um, would change. Well, let me ask you this: my feelings I'll, on it. But I want to know who you think is going to get traded away. I think Wayne Simmons is one hundred percent getting traded. Guy leads the team in goals with fifteen. He's a 
stellar addition to any team. The Flyers can get something nice for him. Um, just other teams beware of that. Wayne likes to likes to throw some bodies around, so he's going to take some penalty minutes for you. He'd but, be perfect for Winnipeg. Yep. Winnipeg is looking for a number two center. Oh, that's a really well. He's a wing, but he yeah. you know he'd still be good for them. Uh, what about your boy Claude Giroux? What do you think? Do you think? Do you think they dish him or do you think they hold on? Hold on to him. He's one of the best players in the NHL, and and he's your yeah. leader. And he's signed for what? How many more years? So. Yeah, he, yeah, he's got a nice little contract on him. I agree yeah. with you. I think they hold on to him. I think they hold on to Couturier. Would you agree? Yeah. He's so young. He's so young. You have to hold on to him. You have to, yeah. Um... What about Voracek? Do you think they can get something for him? Yes, I think they hold on to him. Uh, how many years? He's only got like two years left, right? Yeah, he doesn't have a lot. Of, he doesn't have a lot left on his contract. So... They, if if not this year, the next year for sure. Yeah, because they're not. I don't. If they 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 shouldn't resign him. So no. If not then, this year, I don't, next year. Connect me so young. I don't think they dish him. They're not letting Gostas Bear Provorov go, and they just signed JVR to I think a three year deal. So I don't know if they if they wanted to dish him. I don't know if they'd be able to. Right. So it's a weird it's a weird spot that they're in right now. But I think getting that the back half of the team kind of transitioning along with the guys that are down with the phantoms. I think some of it's, they have to let some of these contracts expire because I don't think they want to be clogging up waivers with all these different requests of sending players, you know, here and there. Yeah. And, and it, like I said, it'd, it'd be interesting to see. I'm not sure they make any major moves. I think they stand pat this. I don't think they trade anyone. If we're being honest, uh, I'm sure people will inquire about, yeah, I'm sure people will inquire about Simmons, but, and they'll try to sell, but um, it'll be secondary guys that you and I won't even think of think of in terms of major moves. But yeah, that's uh, a good point. We thought that forever with uh, Bowmeister, remember? In, yeah. in Florida, every year it was where is he going and never got moved. Yeah, and yeah, you know, I, I just think that they've committed so hard to this, and and you know they're 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 now excited and committed to Carter Hart that they're just gonna try and ride the Carter Hart wave out and see what they can do with this little win streak they got going. But, um, Jordy, let's hop into the all-star game. Um, let's talk it. You want to give us a little quick update on the Bruins before we hop in the all-star game? Yeah. I, I mean, the Bruins remain an, an unbelievable home team. Um, 17 wins at home, but they're 500 on the road. Uh, and you're just not going to win or you're not going to, yeah, you're not going to win, and, and you're going to remain a wild card team in, in the NHL if you're if you're 500 on the road or, or less. So, um, wish they traveled better. Um, it's tough because they've been fighting the injury bug all year, and um, as much as they're just not getting enough out of other other lines outside of their top line. Um, there was a wild. There was a time there where where David Krejci was really cruising, but that was because he was playing with Pasternak because Bergeron was out. Um, I personally have maintained that while as good as the as the top three forwards are together, Pasternak, Marshawn, and Bergeron, I personally think that uh, another I statement. I'm just crushing the I I I all night. All good. Um, you know, I I think that they should split them up. Um, Break it up. Try and try and get a second line going so they can have scoring from two lines as opposed to one. Um, their fourth line uh, is playing out of this, out of their world, out of their mind that they were before break. So in Corrali, uh, Corrali, Nordstrom, and Achari, um, and they were really, really, really having a good little little run there, points and games in a row. So. Um, Tuka Rash just took a mean concussion right before break. So we'll see when he comes back. You know, it, it's one guy gets healthy. One guy gets hurt. One guy gets healthy. One guy gets hurt. Um, and you know, everyone, everyone has injury problems, but the Bruins have really, really caught it all year. Uh, especially from guys they lean on as opposed to lesser guys who they don't. So it, they made some off season moves that has, has done the opposite of help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, 
some of the guys they brought in, like John Moore and and even Nordstrom, um, sometimes they're healthy scratches. You know, they they not great. So it's tough. It's a tough tough look. But I mean, Tory Krug as a defenseman, leading while Char was out, and and he looks like a monster on their power play. Their power play is one of the best in the in in the AHL, which is awesome. But um, you know, it's fun to watch because they have so much talent. But like I said, they, they're, uh, they're, Jesus Christ, their <laughs> top line is the only line that scores. So yeah. they, they need to switch that. Their power play is second in the league right now behind Tampa Bay. So not a bad spot to be in. Yeah, not, not a bad spot to be in not, at all. Not too bad. Uh, not too shabby, as they say. Right. So yeah, I'm pretty good. Pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty good. good. Um, anyway, let's wrap up a little All-Star yeah. talk. This past weekend, the NHL All-Star game made its way out to San Jose. A little different this year. They figured out that because it was on the West Coast and because the, everything would be happening incredibly late, they decided to do the skills competition on Friday instead of normally Saturday. And the All-Star games on Saturday night instead of on Sunday night. So... The three-on-three tournament, the first game was at 8, second game was at 9, and the final was at 10, which would have been terrible for a Sunday night, but great for a Saturday night. Greg, I know you and I were keeping our phones on the actual games on Saturday night, but we both tuned in a little bit to the skills competition. I think I watched a little bit more than you, but a lot of fun out of it. And starts off with one of our own, a fellow Berkshire alum, making some news at the skills competition. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was awesome. And like you before we, yeah, I mean, I know you set me up for an easy transition home run there, but um, I personally love the Friday night skills competition. Um, I would have liked the game itself to take place a little, uh, you know, earlier. But you know, Saturday night's a tough night for anybody. Um, but I love the three on three action, and and I just love the format that they've switched it to. I, uh, but I hate the fact that less guys make it or whatever it is, but yeah. So going back to your knockout transition, which you can edit and make it sound better. Kendall coin, uh, got to replace, uh, McKinnon in the fastest player contest. Cause you can't say man contest. Um, and she ended up beating one or two guys in the NHL and, uh, with her time and and actually ironically enough on Thursday they do like the practice run and test run of it and she, her time was faster on the Thursday than it was on the Friday and her time on Thursday would have put her in like second or third so yeah um pretty sweet and and pretty cool for Kendall Coyne and uh you know Jordy you're gonna tell a story of of the other American girl who uh or w- woman who who participated in in the passing competition and would have beat every single NHL player in that one had she been allowed to participate. Yeah, so the so to wrap up with Kendall, she came in seventh. She beat Clayton Keller of the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, awesome to see her go. Everyone really seemed to love that she was competing in, and all the women were there. Uh, what Greg was alluding to is that the NHL invited two women from the U.S. team, Kendall Coyne, and Brianna Decker, who we'll come back to in a second, and two Canadian women. And they competed, uh, or really participated, as Greg said, and that's probably the best word, because they ran through each, they each did, I think they each had one of the the skills that they did, and they ran through it, aside from Kendall, who was officially in the fastest skater competition, they all ran through it before the NHL Ellers went through it to, you know, almost like a transition, which... You know, I was a little bit annoyed with to well watching it live because they'd show the these girls going through it or these women, and you know they'd show it as basically B roll while fucking Jr. is interviewing Henrik Lundqvist about how he just won this do you know, the Save Street competition, which was an aw- that was also a pretty awesome atmosphere to to check out. But then, so in the I think it was the precision passing is what it's officially called, but. They had, but the other American, Brianna Decker, who I mentioned, ran through the premier passer, is what it's officially called. So she goes through it as an, uh, and, you know, unofficially, she was a participant, as Greg 
so well said. And, you know, the people that were there noticed that she went very fast through it. And the unofficial time came back faster than the winner, uh, a one Le Leon Dreisaitl of the Edmonton Oilers, who officially came in at 109. The unofficial time for Brianna Decker was 106. Uh, so on social media, you might have seen this hashtag floating around on Twitter. Pay Decker came out because the winner gets $25,000 for their efforts and for winning the competition. The NHL actually came out and said that her official time would have been around 109 or 112, 113. Uh, or no, the NHL, uh, or, uh, or really, it looks like uh, someone from Sportsnet reported that the NHL said this. So I don't think the, NH the NHL officially said anything. But about a day later, CCM, stick manufacturer and equipment manufacturer of hockey equipment, comes out and says that they're going to give Brianna Decker $25,000 for winning and for being a great ambassador for growing the women's game. And on top of that, Greg, the NHL did announce that because all four women were competing or were there and, and did such a great job of representing women's hockey that they're all going to, that they're going to donate 25,000 each or for each woman to a charity of their choice. So uh, a little bit of a, of a faux pas from the NHL because it was very clear that they did not have any sort of contingency plan. If the, and I don't want to say it just happened that the other participants that ran through it were women, but it could have been celebrities, I think. You know, if Ryan Reynolds or Steve Carell or Bieber comes well, out they, and does it, well, I don't they do think it, they would they have had it. a contingency plan regardless they, and really kind of a bad look because it was only women. And some stories made it try, try to look like they were catching the NHL in some sort of sexist circle, well, which they, I didn't like that. But. They, they did this They did this in the Olympic year where when after USA won, they brought like Hillary Knight and, and a couple of the other women to, to really uh, sh demonstrate what the players need to do in the thing. It was the way of honoring the gold medal U S team that everyone was excited by in the Olympics, especially because there were no NHLers. And it was really, it was really a cool thing. Uh, was that last year, right? So yeah, last year. Um, this year they, you know, they got dinged for not inviting Canadian players and the women last year really, they, you know, they went through it slow. They just, they just, you know, they just did it and, and they showed off their hands and their skills, but they were demonstrating. And this year, the first event happened to be the the speed one, right? And Kendall Coyne got to got to officially be in it, yeah, right. Officially be in it. So it sounds like the other women who 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 were there to demonstrate, but the other women said, you know what? She did it full burst. We're gonna go full burst, and they all did it to the best of their abilities. And the girl from the other woman, um, Decker ended up having the fastest time and CCM has come out and said they're going to pay them. And, and so, yes, I, I think the NHL minor oversight, but it, it really is like, it's an NHL thing, right? It's an NHL all-star game. They didn't invite the KHL. They didn't invite, you know, the, the national women's hockey league players. The, the, the women were there to, the women hockey players were there to show off the skills and show off their own skills, but show off the specific drills. So the contingency plan, you can't really blame the NHL for not having one. Um, yeah. I think it speaks more to society as a whole about how, you know, maybe we should start valuing women's sports more, um, proving, you know, that these girls have unbelievable skill that, you know, we should, we should know because, you know, they, yeah, they're Olympic gold medalists, but here they are beating NHL players, which are supposed to be the top hockey players in the world, let alone top male or female, but just top hockey players in the world. Yeah, exactly. And the only reason why I, I worded as contingency plan is, especially as you mentioned in today's day and age, and especially, you know, we're less than two years off of the women's, the U.S. women's team almost boycotting the world championships over something like money. Um, you know, I, I, the only reason why I use contingency plan was something if, you know, if there was, and there ended up being a, you know, woman beating a man there, they don't want to, they don't want themselves to be put into the position where the one article I read was from Yahoo and it made, it didn't really, and it did not word that Brianna Decker wasn't officially in it. It made it seem like she was also, she was also officially in the competition like Kendall coin was, 
so that the you know the the omission of a fact like that could you know then be spun into a different firestorm altogether that's the only reason why i included that yeah no i agree i i just think you know it's 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 tough because it's it's somewhat gotcha journalism but it's also you know people trying to uh I mean, the women it, should it get takes credit. away from the fun, like well, the, and the awesomeness that was. Uh, Kendall did such a great job, yeah, and beat and she beat NHL players too. Clayton Keller is one of the best young players in the league, and yeah. it takes away from that and from what what was an awesome night and just a great weekend. Yeah, with some and, and, somewhat of a bit of a dark cloud. Exactly, and and the women who competed, they're there, you know, for whatever reason. But they not only showed their sport in a good light, they showed themselves in a good light. And it doesn't need to be turned into this whole thing outside of the big, you don't, you don't need to attack the NHL. You should be attacking people in general. Like, Hey, all these people are complaining. Did you know who these women were beforehand? Obviously, you and, I, too. obviously yeah. you and I did because we have stake in the game, but with Kendall and, and uh, Casey Bellamy and other Berkshire alum who, who won a gold medal. And, but do I know who the two Canadian girls were, women who were there were? No. Could I tell you who they were? No. So no, I don't, maybe, oh, yeah. I'm right. on the CBC website and it only mentions Coin and Decker. It doesn't even right. mention their own athletes. CBC is a Canadian <laughs> sports outlet for those that don't know, or Canadian network. For those yeah. that don't know. And and to be fair, like those two women on the USA team, yeah, they're really good. But the captain of the team USA and a couple of the other top USA girls, uh, yeah, Hillary Knight wasn't there. She was right. there last year. Yeah. Hillary Knight was at the. She was playing in the Canadian Women's Hockey League All Star Game. As were so, Casey Bellamy and Jill Sonnier, other Berkshire. Well, Jill didn't graduate, but other Berkshire. Uh, right. They were there. This, it was the same weekend. It was the same weekend. And, and uh, you know, I, you know, it, it, Kendall Coyne and, and Brown Decker are, are top liners. And, and Kendall Coyne played on the same line as Hillary Knight. Um, so, you know. They're clearly, on an NWHL team, right? That's why they weren't there. I'm not sure. But yeah. They, I follow her on Instagram, and she's always because she lives in San or she lives in LA with her husband who plays for the Chargers, and she always is flying to Minnesota to play for the White Caps. I always see on Kendall Coyne's Instagram. Yeah, so no. so, um, good point. And and the point is that they those two and all four of them got to showcase their skills and abilities and and really put women's hockey hopefully on the map and and. It's almost like women's soccer, how the USA women's soccer is the best team every single year, and yet no one follows them. No, not no one, but they're not as talked about um, not during Olympic years. You know, it's like every four years. You we mean get World Cup years, which is one of these years. Right. You know, you get geared up for all this stuff. And, for the Women's World Cup. And the conversation every year is like, oh, the women the women win the World Cup, win gold at the World Cup, and yet they don't get – they get paid less than the men's team who didn't even make the World Cup. So. Yeah. It's a silly. It's it's a silly way that we have things, and there's a we could argue the merits and debates and back and forth oh, yeah. and money and all that. But um, all in all, it takes away from the the good for these these four women who. Yeah, it takes away from the awesome story, right? Because these four women who competed as hard as they could and and really got to showcase their skills and talents. So good yeah. for them. Yeah, but we didn't mean to get to get into that realm. We wanted to mention the story and just in you know, post our, our thoughts on it. Cause it was something I didn't like the, the omissions and trying to, as Greg said, the gotcha journalism aspect of it. And I thought it was a, I thought just them being there was a great, you know, great way to represent women's hockey. As Greg mentioned, we have a little more skin in the game as you know, Kendall is Kendall went to our high school. Kendall was one of my sister's friends at Berkshire. Um, I personally never got to meet her cause we never crossed over. She came after Greg and I graduated, but we were, we were all very proud alumni this weekend. And, you know, um, Definitely a fun weekend. I think we can dive into be a fun comp podcast to talk about the the other three All Star games because the Pro Bowl was this weekend too, and the Pro Bowl continues to stink. Um, how we can try to fix the other non baseball All Star games, but I think we're running out of time here, Greg. I want to thank you as always. This is a ton of fun. I know we had a couple technical difficulties in there, so if you did hear that audience. Uh, we apologize. I'm gonna try to edit it out into the best I can. But Greg, thank you as always. Jordy, go Bruins, go Bees, go Cs. Um, pleasure. I love how positive you were all night. And uh, hey, you want to hear something too? As an Eagles fan, Greg. First of all, 
you're welcome from the Eagles. Because I think that's why Tom Brady's gotten all fuck you is because he lost last year. So I think uh, we, lit the fi- we relit the fire. We re- He was maybe like, oh, yeah, do I want to keep winning every year? And then he lost to Nick Foles. He's still, you know, so now he has the fire know. lit. I don't know if that's true because after they lost the Giants and both times they didn't win the following year. So or they, they didn't even make it the following year. So, yeah, but um, you Boston people don't seem to like Philadelphia very much. So maybe that's what really lit it up. So no, um, honestly, it's it's three years in a row. It's it's them being the best team ever. I also didn't world. realize this is the first time they've done three in a row, three straight Super Bowls. I never realized they hadn't done that before. No team has ever done that. Re- no, the Bills have done four in a row. Okay, so what are you saying? This first time the Patriots have done it. The Patriots have done three in a row, okay. which seems yeah, surprising. Yeah. What I was going to say, as an Eagles fan, Greg, I am rooting for the Patriots. I do not want the Rams to win. Oh Jesus! Did you just, did you just hex the Patriots? No, I, no. The, 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 now you've hexed them by throwing in the <laughs> knock on wood. I'm rooting <laughs> for it because I don't want fucking Sean McVay to be the next wonderkin to the NH or the NFL. <laughs> I don't want Jared Goff being thought of as this great quarterback because he's not very good. I mean, they have a good defense. That's all it is. But you know, you got you. You know, I'm. I'll be rooting for you. I'm just saying that. Jared Goff is not very good in his second year. He makes it to the or the third year. Third year. Third year makes it to crazy. So, did you see Patrick Mahomes post? Uh, him, Goff, and uh, and was it Dak? Yeah, yeah, I think it was Dak at the Pro Bowl. Yeah. He was like, he said, they said we had a terrible, we had a terrible, uh, and Trubisky, right? Oh, no, it's true. No, it was him, Trubisky, and, um, and Deshaun Mahomes. Watson. Oh, okay. So, yeah, because Prescott was the same year as Wentz. Okay. So it was Mahomes, Trubisky, and, and Deshaun Watson. It was Goff there, too. No, Goff, Goff's going to play in the, we were just talking about this. He's playing no, the Super Bowl. He wasn't going to in their draft. Was no, was golf is it was golf Wentz, and then Dak was later okay. that year. Okay, but but Mahomes was saying that they they had a terrible draft year. Uh, you know, or the experts were saying there's a terrible QB draft year, and and all three of them were in the the Pro Bowl. So yeah, their second uh, year. Yeah, I love it. Throw a little shade, um, Jordy. For more on football, be sure to tune in later this week when Matt and I drop our Super Bowl preview for this for the Fun V Tailgate, which we have not recorded yet, so I do not know what we'll be saying. <laughs> PPS. Uh, go bees, go flyers. Hey, Jordy, good luck tonight, buddy. Thanks, man. Yeah, hopefully I don't. Hopefully I don't freeze to death in my outdoor hockey game. Ooh, that's always fun. Yeah, it's not. It's not pond hockey though. It's on foot. Uh, yeah, a little, little less fun. A little less fun. But still, it's yeah. hockey nonetheless. Yeah. All right, thank you everybody for listening. Make sure to go to follow us on all the different social media, and that'll do it. Let's go, baby. Go bees. <laughs>